right. Who's played with resin before? No, you didn't. At all? Just That's why we're here. Yeah. Wow. All right. Bunch of noobs. <laughs> um, resin is, uh, in my mind, a pretty overlooked chunk of jewelry. Uh, and not just jewelry, you can do a lot of other things with resin. Uh, <coughs> think of it this way. Resin is nothing but a liquid, and whatever you want to pour it into and make a copy of or form or anything else, you know, sky's the limit pretty much. Um, now, what you pour it into, that is probably, let's see, what it, should I start the first time? All right, so this molding rubber, let's talk about that first because I want to get one started so it can be ready by the time we go to pour. This is Costaldo two-part molding putty. I try to keep some of this with me at all times. Uh, whenever you go somewhere, uh, I think the best example was I was sitting at a restaurant outside with a couple friends and they had little wrought iron like gargoyle things. Uh, not really gargoyles, but they, they had really neat faces on them. And I had some of this in my glove compartment. So I ran back to my car and while we were eating, and, and the looks on everybody else's faces are, are priceless. Nobody can figure out what you're doing. But you mix up a batch of this, and it takes about 15 minutes to cure. So I'm mixing it up at the table, putting it together, and then I stick it on the gargoyle's face, and then I go back to my meal and I'm talking, and then 15 minutes later I pull it off, and I've got a perfect copy of, of that. So whatever you find, you know, you go to somebody's house and they have a toy or something like that, you make a copy of it real quick. And later on, you mix up a batch of resin, pour it in there, voila. So, now, resin can be goofy and gaudy, it can be contemporary, it can be anything you want it to be, all right? Anything that's like a, hey, how's it going? You made it, good. All right. Anything dry that's not chemically reactive can go into the resin, all right? Uh, anything that's a, a chemical agent or anything like that, that you need to be careful of because that will throw off the chemical reaction that happens with resin. But if it's a dry anything, uh, these are makeup quality glitters extremely fine glitter. And this company sells it in a lot of different colors. Uh, there used to be a theatrical makeup company down downtown somewhere and you used to be able to buy those. But just a touch of those, uh, pearl powders or this stuff. Uh, the uh, Ranger inks, it's a, a pearl additive. And you can add that to the, the resin, and that gives it uh, it's a good example. Yeah, I'll show you guys that in a second. But it gives it like this kind of glow to it. There you go. That's uh, just a single drop of black dye. Mm -hmm. Maybe like half a drop, actually and then that's some pearl additive to it. And it gives it this nice sheen. If you've ever seen a bass boat and you've seen the, the crazy paint jobs that they have with the glitter and the, you know. Now, granted, that's not to everybody's taste, but should you want to do a bass boat finish on something? <laughs> there you go. Um, now, the bottom half of this was one batch. You can do a nice, crisp, clear green. Uh, that's without anything but the color additive. Uh, the orange was a second. <laughs> Always try to have an extra mold on hand so that when you get done and you have extra resin, uh, you have something to do with it other than leave it in a cup. <laughs> You'll always either end up with too much or too little. Mm-hmm.
<laughs> All right. So you'll have to forgive me. I have been working three hours a night for five nights, and I'm going to bed really late. So some of these I did not get them finished. But what you can do with uh, with resin, I mean, here's a couple ideas. This things that are popular right now. There is the preserving things in resin, which I'm sure you've all seen. You know, if you want a scorpion in a belt buckle. My brother used to do that in plastic. Oh. Yep. <laughs> but I haven't even got to see what this looks like yet. It was a. Uh, I raided my wife's stash of dried flowers. <laughs> That's the bottom, mm -hmm. which shouldn't be anything, but. There's an arrangement of flowers on top, and I still need to sand it a bit more to, to bring that out. Mm -hmm. So is that just water? Yeah. Okay. I'm just trying to get it clear enough that maybe you guys can see a little bit of what's in there. Okay. Now, I made a mold of a crystal. Mm -hmm. This is something that I've seen a lot of people selling on Etsy. So I went ahead and just made a mold of this crystal. Uh, I made up a batch of resin rolled it around the inside of the mold, stuffed a couple little sprigs of dried whatnot in there, uh, that stuff all out of our yard, and then <laughs> just, you kind of drizzle it in slow, and then whatever you want in there. And then I, I tried a, a technique, and I'm, I haven't quite figured this one out yet, but. Um, so how do you polish it or make it? Sandpaper, huh? that's all you need. Did you have to destroy your mold to get this out? Or nope. You were able to the push mold? Yep. Nice. Same stuff. Yep. Uh, real flexible. This you do not even need a mold release for. If you use um, just any old thing, you probably want to put some form of mold release or else the resin sticks to it. Uh, I love resin to death, <coughs> but it is awful goop once it gets loose. Uh, trust me. I had some 24 hour old shorts. I was very happy to get new shorts. Mm -hmm. And I had two molds sitting here to my left and I'm working over here and I didn't realize there was a hole in one of the molds and it had been dripping on my knee of my 23 hour old shorts for 20 <laughs> minutes before I noticed. So now I have brand new shorts with a big plastic knee. <laughs> so I recommend that when you work, put down something like tin foil I love tin foil to work on. Uh, it stays put, and it you know it definitely won't get through it. But uh, you know, even a paper towel or any any old thing, just put something down. All right. So, what else can you make? Um, that's now this one. This I actually took my time on and finished it. I like the way it came out. I gotta admit, this was my first wooden resin ring thing, so I really didn't have a clear plan going into this, but I really, I got a lot of ideas off of doing this. That was, I went down to Lowe's and picked up a piece of oak about this big. Well, it was much longer when I started. But uh, just cut that out. And then I sat down with a jeweler saw with a really thick blade and then cut it up like a jigsaw puzzle. That's the other half of the, the, the piece that I made. So. That's nice. I, 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 the skill is then doing the rest of the carving. Yeah, yeah, that was all for just free form, goofing off, whatever sounded neat at the time. Uh, Honestly, I don't have a lot of experience woodworking, but that was really fun. So, I have a bowl so that I bought that has the started. same technique with the resin and nice. stuff. Nice. That's neat. Yeah, um, I'll, I'm going to work on this a little bit more and see if I can kind of refine how I did this. Mm -hmm. But, um, okay, to keep it simple, the wood, if you ever want to do this, just simple sandpaper, get some really coarse stuff to form with after you've uh, cut out your shape. You do the cutting with just your regular old jewelry saw, use a really heavy duty blade, and then 
cut it in any shape, just treat it like a piece of metal. Cut it into any shape you want, and then go through various grades of sandpaper until it gets smoother and smoother. And uh, I think at about 1,000, no, 800, the resin starts to clear back up. Um, and, and I just rubbed a little bit of, uh, what's the finishing oil? Um, tongue, tongue oil. Actually, it is Danish oil. You tell me the difference between the two or not. I don't know. Whatever the Danes do. But, uh, yeah. Another thing that resin's very, very good at is adding color. All right. Enamel is fantastic, but enamel takes a lot of time, a lot of equipment, and a lot of money. Resin, you can add color into anything that you like for very little money, and you can treat it or you can think about it much in the same way that you would res or, uh, enamel. So you can do things like, um, there's that one, we'll talk about that in just a second. Um, I don't really have what I need to do this to completion, but I think I want to get the idea across to you guys. Okay. Now, I wanted to do this with some silver and some tubing. But alas, I ran out of time. So... strength would come from the resin, not the wire. So you can use any gauge you like. Uh, have you ever heard of uh, cloisonne? Mm -hmm. Where you're taking cloison wire and you're making little chambers and then you fill that up with enamel, fire it, and then you file it flat. All right. And what I'm proposing, and I have not done this yet, but I can't think of any reason why it wouldn't work. And I've just put my finger on the tape. Okay, so I'm using tape as my backing. And the tape pulls away from the resin nicely. It leaves it with kind of a frosted look. But it sands out really easily. But the, the stickum is a barrier for the, the glue, and it also keeps it from sneaking underneath. Ta-da! All right. <laughs> Let's try that again. Okay. So back to the teardrop shape. Let's try that one more time. You want to make sure it's fairly level. Put that on there. Lightly push it into place. All right. So then, um, let's try. I don't really have a, a grand plan on this. And you just start making little, I guess you can call them poisons. And you'd probably want to overlap the ends, maybe, I don't know, to make it a little more 
tight. I guess you could put like a little drop of glue. And then you would continue the design, basically whatever you, whatever you want. And you're just making little tiny chambers for the resin to go into. And a pair of tweezers would probably be a very good idea. But we'll pretend that I had them. Okay. So once you get it the way that you want it, then you would very carefully <coughs> mix up a batch of resin. and fill in the different parts. So then you would have almost like a plique type enamel project. It would be, have no back on it, and then you could let the light through. Now, if you take some time, and what I had in mind was originally taking like a piece of um, maybe four by one millimeter sterling wire making uh, an outside for it, and then just cutting cross sections of a piece of silver tubing. And then filling up the entire outside and then going in and selectively coloring some of the pieces of tubing, you know, an alternate or an opposite color, mm -hmm. uh, or leave them empty. Uh, then you would have these perfect silver pierced holes through, you know, I was thinking like a pearlescent white or something like that with silver, and that would look really nice. Mm -hmm. I mean me but yeah so we're going to put this to the side for just a second and we're going to talk about bolt okay I've explained to you why this stuff is essential and why you should all carry it with you like creepy science nerds <laughs> well, to anybody outside of the art, what you're doing is going to be kind of weird. <laughs> there you go. Thanks for being a science teacher, by the way. Especially nowadays. I loved science. All my science teachers were good. Okay. Now, this is a two part. So one activates the other. You do not want to mix them until you're ready to go. So in order to make sure that you have equal parts, ball up one. Uh, you don't really have to do this, but my mind says that you should probably wipe your hands down to get any sort of residue that will kick off the other half of this any earlier than you want it to. But the reason I'm doing this is you can compare the sizes before you start to mix. So I think that that one's just a hair short. Once you've got two of them that are the same size, as close as you can make them, smash them out nice and thin. Kind of like Play Doh. Everybody likes Play Doh. And the reason I'm doing this is because you only have about two minutes worth of working time. So, you got to be ready. All right. So once I put the two of them together, I'm going to roll them up into a little tube and then start mixing. Now, the, the instructions on this say that it does not matter if the color is, con you know, you blended the two of them perfectly. It's hogwash. <laughs> Don't believe it. All right. You want to make sure that it is a nice, even blue-green all the way across. If there's little ropey strings of white in there, it doesn't, I don't care what they say, it doesn't work right. All right, so, put it together, roll it up, and then you're gonna start mixing. Pretty 
good. After an extensive search, I'm going to do a little copy of a little Buddha that I've got. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I ordered it off a line online. <laughs> off of online. I didn't expect it to be nice. I was just like, oh, three bucks, whatever, sure. I'll put it on my bench. All right. And then you leave it alone. It takes about 15 minutes to cure, and then you're ready to go. <coughs> so, while that's working, let's do two other things. First, this is the start of another ring. <laughs> that one's cedar. Does it matter if you leave it open? No. Okay. No. I was just curious. The stuff's, and I've okay, got I'm jars just... of this from 10 years ago that are still good. Jars of what? You sell that this stuff. Oh. oh, yeah. We sell another formula that's a, a blue one. I have not gotten a chance to use it, but it's a softer version of this. So, I, I in theory, you could have more detail molds or get things out of the mold more easily. Now, I know that that doesn't look like much at the time. It's a stick with some uh, plastic on the end. But my thought was... So this one's shiny and then this one is gnat and you can depending on how you finish it sure you, you can bring it back up to this oh. um a real easy way to get it back up to glossy is to put your gloves on put a little bit of the resin in your hand and just kind of work it into the surface put it down and let it cure um, that will bring it back up to a high high gloss um, if you want to treat it more like wood i kind of wanted this to blend in a little bit um, and I left it more of a sat. I like this one. Yeah, I thought it fit that. Now, I'm going to make a ring out of this, so we're going to treat this just like a piece <coughs> of stock. So, let's say the ring hole is going to be there. Right about, what do you think, there? That work? Sorry, Scott, I tried to use the, the drill press and this thing was just a little too long for me. <laughs> Pretend like I bought this drill here. Uh -huh. All right. Don't press. Just kind of let the drill bit do its thing. If you press, you'll blow out the other side of it and it'll chip the wood. Actually, <laughs> uh, actually, I think it comes out to just shy of an eight. But all right, and now once you've got that through there, then you would just go ahead, and I would run the band thicker than you would for a piece of metal. You could probably take this down by half, uh, especially since this is an oak. It's a good strong wood. It, I wouldn't push it too far though. And then just sketch out your idea. All right. And 
And then you would take your jeweler saw and just cut that out. That's it. And then you would go, and then the sanding would begin. Uh, use your flex shaft, any of the burrs that you have, that like the larger burrs, anything for wax, anything for metal will work. And you can use that to shape or carve or do anything you want to that. Um, you can use just really, really coarse sandpaper, like this stuff that's backed with denim or whatever it is. Uh, that stuff's great for shaping. Uh, get a real soft vise. Like we sell the, the leather pads for the, the side of, of the vise, you can then put this in there, clamp it down, and then just cut a strip of sandpaper and work it back and forth. That's a really quick, easy way to, to round corners off. And just go nuts, have fun. Mm -hmm. um, did you put that into a mold or? So? Um, what I did, uh, here. All right, uh, I'll share a quick story with you. I tried all sorts of creative, interesting ways to break a piece of wood the way I wanted to. I tried making, I made this little brass contraption that would go into a vise that was in theory supposed to leverage the piece of wood and snap it right where I wanted and, and I thought, oh, I'm so smart and it never worked, never worked on anything. Honestly, the best way that I have found is get really frustrated at the brass contraption that you just made, <laughs> stick it in a vise, and hit it with a three-pound sledgehammer. Works like a charm. It looks like a cityscape. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm hoping that's what this one's going to look like. Uh -huh. But uh, And then what I did, this stuff, especially, that is... Okay a special packing slash resin tape. Did you steal that from a shipper? <laughs> no. <laughs> kind of. I won't tell him. It just fits the ship. <laughs> <laughs> Question, is the belt sander too uh, fast for the resin? Will it melt it and mess it up? Or? No, it works beautifully. Okay, cool. Just keep it slow. If you go too fast, it totally melts it. Same with uh, the burrs, keep the speed down. If you get going too quick with the flex shaft, the, the friction builds up and it, it starts to smear. All right. Now I would probably put another piece across the bottom and then mix up a batch, pour it in there, and you're good to go. Matter of fact, why don't we... How long does it take for it to cure? Um, Ice resin is particularly slow, which can be frustrating sometimes, but honestly, if you're making this for jewelry, I would rather have it be slow than fast. Um, and we'll go over why here in just a second. Humidity and temperature are probably key too. Yes, yes they do. Do not try to do this outdoors in the winter. <laughs> yeah. <there's laughs> winter? yeah. That that mythical season that they have up north. Right. Okay, so that's ready to go. And you just pour it in on top of it, fill it up, and then let it sit. With ice resin, you've got about 45 minutes of working time. And then let it sit for anywhere from one to three days. All right. This, um, I think this cured rock hard overnight, which is kind of unusual. And then this one is still kind of soft. And then it bounces back to its original shape, but it still needs to sit for another day. Then all three of those are ice resin. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's... Yeah. Trust me, these will be pretty at some point. I just... Because it's so thick, do you have to pour it all at once, or can you pour it in layers? You can pour it in layers, and you can get really neat designs that way. Um, the all right, let's let's talk about the the ratio. Sorry, you. No, that's I, okay. I I just started thinking about something that it is important that I stress that these have to be exactly the same quantity in each one. 
Okay? If you go a little high or a little low, it will cause them to either take longer to, to cure or they'll cure really fast and um, it will kind of trap air bubbles in it, mm -hmm. which is kind of what I did here. But don't use a scale. <laughs> I thought I was being smart and I was going to use my scale. These two parts do not weigh the same. <laughs> um, No, not yet. Oh, Shush. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's big fast up here. I know. <laughs> and it lights up. <laughs> okay. So these are worth the investment. It's a little tiny mixing cup. Use them, throw them away. You know, make little decorative hockey pucks if you like. Uh, but use these as your measurement and get some gloves or you'll be going around all day sticking to things. I have made every mistake in the world with this stuff, so let me go ahead and pass along some of the goofy things that I've learned. Too much fun with this over the past week. I'm almost out. All right, that's 30 milliliters. It looks like you're putting more of the blue here. Well, it's slightly graduated, and the yellow kind of dips down in the middle. Oh, All right. So when you mix this stuff, the corners are the killer. You really need to make sure that you get down and work all of the, the solution into it. If you miss the corners, and I'm not sure what she was thinking when she made it a rounded uh, scoop, uh, having bamboo skewers on hand, everybody should have a stash of these somewhere. They're Incredibly useful. Now, when you start to mix it, <laughs> don't go fast. Keep it nice and slow, and you'll see how it starts to get ropey like that. You will know when you are pretty much at the end once this starts to clear up. When you can no longer see the, the fibers or the streaks in there, it's good to pour. And the reason I said go slow is because you're trying very hard not to whip air into it. Okay. Uh, air bubbles are kind of the bane of existence when it comes to doing resin work. One of the nice things about ice resin is it cures very slowly, so it allows time for the air bubbles to rise to the top. And in theory, you would then sand them off. Or you can use your breath. The carbon dioxide will help uh, pop the bubbles. You can also use a torch, but you cannot use a torch when you are using plastic packing tape. <laughs> Uh, if you are doing this on a large piece of wood, you'll see uh, uh, like various projects on YouTube of people that make wooden tables with 
resin panels in the middle that light up and do all sorts of stuff. Um, you know, you can use a torch in that setting and that will pop the bubbles really quick. And that's nice, but this, not so much. Do you have your heat gun? I don't know if that would do it or not. Yeah, you uh, have enough tape, I don't know. Uh, I don't I'll know. Have to track for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've got one down here, but I don't think I'm going to try. <laughs> I'd rather do that in private. So if I'm going to catch it on fire, I don't have witnesses. <laughs> What? Check. <laughs> My homeowner's insurance policy says that very clearly. Mm. <laughs> no creme brulee for you. No torches. No. I'm sure mine says something very similar. All right. Does it expand at all? Nope. How resistant is this to UV? Will it yellow at all if it's... This one out? is particularly good about staying clear. Uh, I have bought less expensive uh, resins and they yellow horribly over time. Okay. Uh, that's one of ice resins nice little features. What, what does a bottle of this run? These? Uh, 20 bucks, 20 something for the, the two of them. So at this point, then you would add the color? Yep. I am going to, what do you say, Buddha? You ready? Yeah, you're ready. All right. Oop. We're just going to need a little packing tape on a stomach there. Um, Mike, could you tear me off a piece of that? Gloves and packing tape are mortal enemies. All right, so we've got a couple different things. I think I'm going to do what color should Buddha be? Buddha? All right. Gold. Gold? Got a yellow label over there. Is that gold? Yellow. All right. Blue. Blue gets to be gold. Not blue? Sure, go for blue. Blue. It's your, blue. your piece. Blue. You got it. Yeah. Blue, blue. All right. So do you need a separate batch, or can you now split that up? Split it up. Um, in a perfect world, you could have lots of little disposable cups and then pour it out. Uh, you get a nice long amount of time with this, so go ahead and split it up to whatever you like. I'm going to pour straight resin into this um, just because I overcolored this one. So how long do you have to wait in between each layer to figure out how to like the layers of color? Hour and a half. Um, there's a technique involving this stuff that I'm going to talk about here in just a second that I haven't quite figured out, but in theory it should work. Excuse me. All right, so what I like to do, especially right at the beginning, is not pour it directly in, but just lightly go over it. This seems, at least in my mind, to help keep the air bubbles to a minimum. Uh, air bubbles like to catch on certain like points, and the more complicated the surface, the more likely it is to have air bubbles attached to it. Can you tap them out? <sighs> it's very okay. thick. Um, I usually, before I pour, I'll let this sit for five, ten minutes and let all the air bubbles rise to the top so, you know, they're not stuck in the, the mixture. It's hard to tell. You think you could pull that up in a syringe at that thickness or no? It's almost like you read my mind. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we'll talk about that in just a second. Cool. I'm trying very hard to get that to work. Yeah, I think you could just as long as you don't use a real small, you know, like tip. Oh no, yeah. that part works. Really? I'll just, I'll describe what I'm trying to do to, and to see if you guys have any suggestions. 
All right, now at this point, we're looking pretty good. I'm probably gonna put about a little bit sink in all around. And go ahead and fill it up. Go a little higher than you intend to, just so you have some safety on top that you can sand off later on. Not that this one. one. I've got the one that's already an orange. Wait a minute. Um, could you use the color and make it look like marble? Sure. Oh. You can put your glitter in there if you want. Mm -hmm. Glitter? Should we put glitter in there? Yes. Mm -hmm. Gold. Mm -hmm. Golden blue? Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. Tell me what you think. See how strong this tint is. So I'm thinking to make it like marble, I could probably use the tip in a syringe and then insert it inside that mold. Stop jumping ahead. Okay. <laughs> you're going to give away all my best secrets. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. No, you're doing fine. I'm I'm, hey, I'm happy that you're you're thinking that far in advance. Forward thinker. <laughs> all right. Puzzles. Injection. I went on to Amazon and I bought a whole bunch of them. Ah, we need more than that. The syringes? Yep. I just sent a whole bunch back because there was kind of blunts. They came in sharps. Really? Yep. I was kind of mad I couldn't find sharps. Oh, I found them twice. <laughs> <laughs> Despite your best efforts. Yeah. Locally, go to Tractor Supply. They're the only people that will sell you a syringe. Yeah. 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 Tractor Supply. But they're sharps. Yeah, yeah. And if you sharps. want blunts, yeah. you yeah. can't get them. You want them for your class? I wouldn't give those kids that. A blunt, a blunt one. Yeah, no, no, I wanted them for my playing. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was gonna say if it's for your class, I've got more than I need here. I'll share one. I do. All right. So here we've got. He's ready. Mm -hmm. I pass it around, but it's probably very sticky right now. All right. So let's see. A little bit of just a touch of green. going to mix it up real well because I kind of want it to be a little streaky. All right. I almost poured it on the wood. Mm -hmm. There you go, Buddha. Hope you like the color. <laughs> that was funny. No, I'm not going to tell anybody what happened. <laughs> oh, the magic of editing. Oh, that's staying in. <laughs> All right. Now, I, I did not work this enough to, to be effective. But um, we'll see what happens. We'll pour just a little <clears> bit in there. 
If anything, you can pour a little bit in, seal the bottom, and then kind of work. You know, let the first layer harden, and then go back, because now this will seal all the little nooks and crannies. So does it need to cure all the way before you add the next layer? Nope. You are concerned with viscosity. It's actually holding better than I thought it would. Okay, now, syringes. Bless you. Are you cooling the gun to cure the copper on the outside? You know, mm -hmm. the green on the inside? Oh, that actually worked pretty well. Okay, so I went out virtually and uh, found a bunch of these blunt syringes, heavy barrel ones. Just what you were looking for, right? Mm -hmm. I, I mean... You'll have to tell me where you got them. <laughs> Here? Yeah, well, besides that, yeah. All right. Oh, so you don't turkey, turkey injection. I, no, I, I don't. I honestly, I guess they're just for crafts. Yeah, they're for blue bottles. Is that what it is? Yeah. All right, for what? Blue bottles. Oh. So. Solder paste. Oh, there you go. Yeah. 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 yeah, we do have uh, some fine ones over there. Okay. Now, I'll uh, see what we get with this. Now, my thought originally was that I wanted to take the syringe and do, you know, say in something like this where it's fairly clear. And then Now, my thought was that you would take the syringe in opposite color, draw this up into the syringe, and then you could very carefully put the needle down in there and inject a little ball of color, mm -hmm. draw that back up, and then go back down, inject a little bit of color over here, and in theory, you could make a larger piece and have a whole range of syringes set up. And then, have you ever, seen like uh, chefs when they do the garmage on the edge of the plate and they, they draw through it or your uh, barista at Starbucks right. when they draw something on the top of the coffee. Exact same idea, but you'd be doing that in three dimensions with color. Okay, so why haven't I done it yet? Because it did not work. <laughs> um, this one. Okay, this was supposed to be clear with a very pale silvery color uh, with um, pearlescence in it. And I was trying to do that, but it just, it mixed together. It like, it flowed down to the bottom, which was the tip of the crystal, and just left streaks the whole way down. So what I'm thinking you need to do is do the batch, let it sit, uh, maybe 30, 45 minutes into it, mix up a second batch, colorize it, and then inject that in once this has started to set up. Um, if they're both the same viscosity, then they mix. Okay. Mm -hmm. So one has to be thicker than the other. But, um, and if you wait till Maybe one of them set up before you draw it into the syringe, if it, the syringe is strong enough, then it would be more like, um, 
I don't expect it to hold together like toothpaste, but you can maybe get a more clearly defined line inside of another piece. I don't know. Um, I have not got to really try this out, but <coughs> it sounds like a neat idea. Maybe adding a flake to it will, alone will make it thick enough to suspend it, you know? Maybe. Because you didn't add flake to the one, right? You just used regular. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. nothing in that one. Uh, th yeah, this is chock full now. Or maybe bumping up just a touch more hardener in it. I don't know. Um, but I have enjoyed working with resin for years, so I, I guarantee I'm going to try more of this. All right. Um, now, as for weird things you can do with resin. Now, I don't know, maybe 15 years ago, I had some friends help me out and we made a cast of my head. All right, so. Nice. Now, it lights up uh, because basically I had LED lights sitting on my workbench from a previous uh, project and I went ahead and said oh you know what LED lights are made out of resin why don't I just poke those in there and they work great and they completely disappear they're almost invisible until they turn on kind of neat kind of useless uh, it really creeps my friends out I'm apparently not allowed to turn this on and leave it out <laughs> anywhere uh, <laughs> ah I'm, I'm so glad you you said that. So, turn it to my so you may. Yeah. yeah, you may notice all the, the crud on the top of it. Is that glow in the dark paint or something? Nope. No, no. Pshaw. Yeah. All right. So, I've been electroforming, and this has become kind of like my default mandrel for making masks for myself. I like to make masks, I also make shadow boxes and things like that. Um, paper mache over this and it makes this perfect form-fitting mask. So, okay, bear with me. So I was thinking polymer clay. Polymer clay and then electroforming the polymer clay. So I made a Halloween mask. <laughs> so now I have this perfect form-fitting Gary Halloween mask that I'm going to turn copper. Actually, it's probably going to be silver eventually, but so nice work. So yeah. what what I want you to think about <laughs> is that resin's not just you know some quirky little thing that you can get into and make little doodads. You can also make workable tools that also then can forms and anything you can imagine. Then you combine this with your jewelry skills, your metalworking skills, um, your paper mache skills, however you want to do it. But you can then work that in and there, it opens up a lot of different ideas. Uh, I have been kicking around the idea of doing LED jewelry with resin and silver for a very long time. I've come up with a couple ideas, but I have yet to get off my butt and actually do it. So, if I ever do it, I'll let you guys know. But any questions? Nothing at all. Excellent. I must have answered everything. Well, thanks for coming in, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So how long will the Buddha take to, to dry your thing? Um, I will probably leave him in there till tomorrow. Sorry, I was trying to get one done, and this one's leaking out. And the, so if you want, you could, sorry, you could uh, stick a, like a, a sterling hook or whatever. No, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Or afterwards, sure. just drill a hole, your drop your bale in, actually dip it in a little liquid resin, and then drop it in. Uh, yeah. uh, I find doing stuff like that after the fact much easier than trying to do it Straight while it's liquid. Yeah. Well, so, 
it is so messy. I swear this stuff's like peanut butter. It'll leap onto you. Yeah. Uh, I try not to touch it until it is done and finished. So the volume being so small. In this one, mm -hmm. same setup time or cure time? Nope, yep, same, same. No same matter how much time. it is. Okay. And there are different types of resin. Um, you know, some only require a little bit of catalyst, uh, but they're all pretty much the same way. Once you start the chemical reaction, uh, it's pretty uniform no matter how much volume there is. <coughs> and you just sand it until you're happy with the look. Yep. Treat it just like any, you know, any other, I think of it mostly like wood. You can grind it, shape it, sand it, do all the things that you could carve to wood, it, carve wood. it, absolutely. Yeah. Um, actually, if you use wood carving tools, it's a joy to work with. It, oh, it carves okay. very nicely. Uh, with wax burrs and files work? On? Absolutely. Uh, metal burrs work too. Uh, you just have to stop and clean them out from time to time. Can you get a clear enough uh, finish with just sandpaper? Do you find yourself using like a polishing compound or a rubber compound? Um, I have not gotten to try any of the, we sell a plastic compound over there that I've been meaning to take a stab with, but um, I, I haven't gotten to do it yet. Um, I did all of this with just sandpaper. And I... It's got a sea glass finish. Honestly, I didn't do a very good job. Good. That's uh, terrible. <laughs> no, I mean I I donate I, it to the cause. Yeah. <laughs> I I kind of skipped steps and rushed it a little bit. I don't, I don't know. But it still turned out nice. So if you really took your time and went through the grades of sandpaper, I think that would come out just shy of glass. So how do you dispose of what you have left if you don't want it? Yeah. Does that make a difference? Um, well, once it, it solidifies, I mean, granted, in its liquid state, it's not the most environmentally friendly thing, so don't dump it out when it's liquid. I just let it cure, and then it becomes a piece of plastic, and you can, it's pretty inert after that. So toxicity, um, uh, like... There are forms of resin that are extremely bad. Uh, ice resin is very nice. There's very little odor. There's very little fumes. Um, some of the others that I've tried uh, were very bad. Mm -hmm. uh, fiberglass resin is, is noxious. Right, right. Uh, always work in a well-ventilated place if you can. Um, because you made the copper there, it's going to sit on the skin. Would you back it or would there be any... It's, remember, that's going to touch only on the edge. So. Well, I mean, even the resin, though. So there's no interaction between the skin oils and the resin? No. Nope. Okay. No, I mean, it becomes literally plastic. Very cool. Thank you. Awesome. You got Thank it. You. And looks like I'm going to lose this one completely. Oh, uh, well. Basically, all I need to do is just let that do its thing. And then add. And then add it again. Yeah, gotcha. And since Stop I didn't add, right now, since I didn't then add any color to it, then it's it's easy. Oh yeah. And there won't be even just a subtle line. Not without visible. color. Yeah. Okay. Clear is good. No, that that should match up, and it's got a little yellowish cast to it right now, and that should clear up once it's. And what are you doing with this? Did you do? What did you do with it? Nothing. Uh. Oh. I don't think you'd poured it in anything. Um, I was going to put it in the syringe, but then... Oh, 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 oh. Okay. I don't know. What would you like me to do with it? Drink it. No. <laughs> uh, so put it in part of that vessel. Okay. Put it in that round Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it looked like it jumped ship with just a little tiny bit. But you could fill the tiny spaces with the syringe, no problem. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> if and then you're tossing the whole syringe. Yep. There's no. Yeah. yeah we, using it. Once you mix this in something or use a tool with it, 
It's pretty much dedicated to resin. <coughs> No, I'll leave it yeah, just like that. I like that. You got the little edges. But so, you can't rinse that out and use that measuring cup again then? Or you don't recommend that? You could. Um, you could take a paper... Towel. Yeah, yeah. No, no. you could take a paper towel and wipe it out. That would probably be your best bet. Should you need to remove this stuff, uh, like I'm sure this is going to soak through and mm -hmm. I'm probably going to have to fight this with some sandpaper later on, but if you need to remove this from a metal tool or something like that, or you've put it into a bezel and you don't like the way it came out, we have a product called Attack, which is specifically made to dissolve resins. So should you need to, it's available. So can you take a single edge, like if you got it on your steel block, will a single edge razor blade pop oh, it off? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, steel, it pops right off. Right. Glass, it pops yeah. right off of. Yeah. Um, Plastics like um, the real flexible cutting boards or the silicone mm -hmm. cutting boards. I'm pretty sure that it doesn't stick to that. Uh, I apologize if it does. Not yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, so long as I've got a. Now this mold will pretty much make a cabochon. <laughs> uh, absolutely. Because I'll get an idea and then I'll wish I had it sometime. So I'm going to get some of this resin. Cool. Yep. So is that uh, atomite? Is that what you call it? <laughs> uh, yes. So do you purchase the tents each separately? Yeah, and then you just mix them like you would. As opposed to the alcohol inks. You, the alcohol ink. <laughs> alcohol ink is not concentrated enough. Um, you can use it, but you end up using so much of it mm -hmm. that it tends to kind of throw your mixture off. Yeah. And it it will cure, but it takes it a long time. That's why. Are these not with the alcohol inks then? Right. Th those are all available. I think just go ahead. If you want any of those, go ahead and grab them. Okay. We're going to shop around. Okay. Thank you, ladies. Yeah.